welcome, 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 welcome once again to Let's Speak It Out Loud. Hello everyone, I am your host, Goddess Candace the Alicorn, and it is my pleasure to be here with you today. I hope everyone is doing very, very well today. I'm so glad you can join me once again. Um, Thank you. Thank you, all of those who are tuning in. If this is your first time, welcome. If it is not your first time, y'all pretty much know what to expect. This is just me speaking it out loud. So first things first, my love, excuse me. I would love to say to you, thank you all, each and every person who has donated to this podcast. As you know, that's how this podcast continues to move forward and elevate and, you know, motivate and That's what I try to do. Um, Like I say, if you'd like to donate to the podcast, (coughs) all the information is down in the bottom. Oh, excuse me. I don't know what's going on in my throat today. All the information is down in the bottom. Um, You can follow me on Podbean right here. And you'll see all the information down there. Um, You can follow me on Instagram, YouTube. Or just go ahead and follow my, you know, website. Speakit17.podbean.com. Yeah, Bean, B-E-A-N, podbean.com. <laughs> all right, y'all. So I want to thank you all once again. Truly, truly, it's an honor to be here with you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I was sitting here thinking about coming to you guys today. As you know, we are family. And there's so much going on in the world today. And I thought about what do I want to podcast about today? It's so much stuff, so much BS going on. But as you know, I always talk about things that deal with us, the copper-colored indigenous. You know, the ones they call black in America. But once again, I reiterate, black is not a race. White is not a race in America. It is a status. Okay? Moving on. (laughs) So... I definitely want to talk about some things that I've been seeing in our community today. And I said I was not going to talk about this, but everybody's going crazy and everybody's talking and giving their opinion and this and that and that and this. So I'm going to give an opinion on everybody else's opinion. How about that? First thing I want to say is. Chris got the shit smacked out of him. Yes, he did. <laughs> now, I have heard everybody's comment. There's violence, violence, and will, and, and oh my God, there's violence, and we shouldn't be violent, and we should never put our hands on another person, and, and unless it's self-defense. So, everybody's talking about every reaction. Will's reaction. Chris's reaction. Jada's reaction. Everybody at the Oscars reaction. Let me first say this. That's the most interesting motherfucking thing that has happened at the Oscars in I don't know how many years. I wasn't even going to watch it. I didn't watch it. I saw the slap the next day. Okay? (laughs) Because I don't watch those things. They never have us on there. And, you know, Halle Berry is the last indigenous female that has won anything. So, apparently it's not for us. Okay, if we're not included, then I ain't going to watch it. It's good sometimes to watch other cultures and things like that. Like I watch Telemundo. (laughs) I don't want to say anything they're saying, but I will watch that. It's good for that. However, I know it's that. But don't tell me it's this and show me this because I ain't got time. That's a waste of my time to watch a bunch of white people giving each other accolades. So it's quite interesting. But, um, just to say, that was quite something. That was quite something. Now, we all know what happened. We know how it happened. So, I'm going to make a prayer right here. (laughs) Universal creator, ancestors, spirit guides, protected, positive entities who are around me in my life. Guide my words that I may say something of wisdom especially truth thought provoking hilarious and just real that's all I ever want to do 
Throughout this podcast today, I hope I say something that touches your heart, makes you laugh, makes you cry with joy. Because you know, whenever we cry, that's just a cleansing anyway. That means you're getting through something and getting it out there. Okay? And when those tears dry, it's a whole new joy in the morning. Huh. So I guess, y'all, I just really, <clears throat> I'm going to give my opinion and I'm going to speak it out loud on the slap. The first thing I want to say is this, and I'm not defending anybody. I'm not agreeing with anybody. Now, if you happen to agree with my thoughts, okay, cool. But I ain't telling you, you got to think like I think. Because the world is what it is. And we definitely need to understand that sometimes people get the shit smacked out of them. Remember next Friday and Friday, you got knocked the fuck out. Sometimes people need to get that. However, I don't have any opinion on why that was the trigger that made Will stand up and do that. Because like I said, the Oscars, nobody's been watching that. So how do I know that this wasn't planned, that they went and told Will and Chris, look, Chris, you're going to get the shit smacked the fuck out of you after you make that joke about Jada. Will, we need you to go up there and smack the fuck out of him so they can have something to talk about. Because nobody's been talking about the Oscars. We damn sure haven't. Not the indigenous copper color people. We don't talk about the Oscars. That's not some big shit for us. You know, and that could have been the reason why Will was crying, too. Like, damn, I didn't sold all the way out. These motherfuckers own me forever. And Chris didn't move because it was planned. That's just one angle to look at it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Y'all blaming Will and Chris is such a victim and this and that. That could be karma. Will could have been used for karma. We don't know these people. Y'all need to understand that, number one, Will Smith didn't do a, he did a human thing. Okay, I need for y'all to hear me clearly. Will Smith is not the dude in iRobot. He is not Muhammad Ali. He is not the guy, Agent J, in my favorite movie, Men in Black. He's not the superhero in all the movies that he's played in. He's a human being and he's a man. He's a human being and he's a man. Okay. I can't say whether it was right or wrong that he got up and reacted the way he did. Because for me, like I told y'all, for the past three, four, five, six years, I've been trying to respond versus reacting. See, reacting to make you smack the fuck out of somebody. Response is what Chris Rock did. (laughs) And sometimes a response can be nothing. No movement, no nothing. You know, and everybody thought Will was going crazy. And I get it. Everybody's saying, we shouldn't be violent. Jim Carrey talking all kind of shit. Jim Carrey, when, when did you decide to start to speak up against something about violence? Now, I've never heard you on TV talking about violence. I ain't hear you say shit about George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, none of them. Philando Castillo, nobody. Sandra Bland, I ain't hear you say nothing about none of them. But you want to comment on Will and what he should have done. Will, you all right, brother. Whatever your issue is, that's your issue. But we got to understand this. You know from your fingertips back is your personal space. I told y'all that. And yeah, Will violated his personal space. What if Chris would have came out the bag and punched the fuck back out of him? Then it really would have been, Oscars y'all really would have got some ratings and got some some paidness. You know, but it is what it is. Now, the joke about Jada's hair, first of all, let me say this. I have worn a bald head for years. I don't have alopecia. It's just I'm damn sexy with no hair on my head. I know that about me. Now, we got to get over looking at people and judging them by their cover. And what I mean by that is you can't tell that someone has an illness or ailment or anything just because you look at them. But Jada was very open about her alopecia. Now, 
I say this to say, Will, I don't know what was going on with you that day. However, good job for defending that sister. Because I just did a podcast a couple of days ago. Why does the world hate the indigenous aboriginal copper colored woman so much? Well, actually, I don't give a damn what the hell Will and Jada been going through in their marriage. How many, whoever they done done it to, entanglements and entwinements. I don't care nothing about that. I respected you, Will, for standing up for that black woman. Excuse me, so-called black woman, that indigenous woman. I commend you for that. And if it gets you in trouble, okay. However, like I said, I don't know what the hell was going on between you and Chris. Mm-hmm. Y'all will work that out or y'all won't. Y'all either been hating each other, because, Will, that wasn't just some shit because he said something about Jada. It could have been a buildup or shit, but like I said, call me a conspiracy theorist. How do we know that the Oscars didn't set this up? How do we know that? They use us as puppets anyway. Chris and Will are puppets. And everybody there at that show. So how do we know? And I ain't accusing nobody of nothing. I'm just saying, there's a lot of ways you can think and look at this. You know, and there's plenty of sisters out here that's bald-headed. Y'all got to get out of this mentality of all women have to look alike and all women have to wear the weaves and all women have to say this and look this way and look that way. And I understand, Chris, you said it wasn't a dig about Jada's alopecia. It was a dig about G.I. Jane. Fuck G.I. Jane. That bitch ain't been relevant since, what, 85, 95? I don't know. When I, didn't, I was probably in high school when G.I. Jane came out. And I'm old as shit. It was on the other day because they still play reruns of every fucking thing. So, I mean, it's what it is on that part. And now the world is talking about we should never be violent. We should never be violent. But yet and still, the reality of it is, y'all know what else happened in the news today while everybody was talking about Will and all of that? And Chris and Jada and everybody giving their opinion and commentary? Tell me, somebody tell me what else was happening in the world today. I'll give you a minute to think about it. Think about me and what I'm going to say. And that's how you know what I'm about to say. When we talk about no violence and violence shouldn't be condoned and this and that and that and this because a dude got smacked on TV. Joe Biden just signed the anti-lynching bill. It's called the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act. Y'all, it is 2022. And we just now signing the Anti-Lynching Act. Let me ask you something. Why is it when it's anything concerning the indigenous copper colored people's rights, the original people who were here before any European decided to come here? How come there always has to be an act of Congress, a bill signed to say to leave us the fuck alone? Huh? Now you want to talk about Will and Jada and Chris getting smacked? <laughs> That's just hood shit, y'all. Real talk. Now, (laughs) let's speak it out loud. Let's call a thing a thing. I'm talking to my people. I'm not performing for those other people. I'm talking to y'all. Let's call a thing a thing. That's some shit that happened every day. Every day. And Will Smith and Chris, you know, are not above reproach. You know, I can't say... If Chris Rock was right or wrong, but you got the shit smacked out of you, that's all I know. And like I say, Tyler Perry and Denzel was talking to him. Y'all thought we was about to go crazy in that bitch, huh, didn't you? Why? Because when any indigenous man shows any type of brute masculinity, which this country praises, We praise that. We praise that brute masculinity. I love MMA. I love watching John Wick. The brute masculinity of it. When a copper colored indigenous brother does that. 
white folks get scared. And then all y'all little bitch asses out here. Y'all know we shouldn't have been acting like that in front of the white people. I can't believe we showed out like that at the Oscars. Who the fuck is Oscar? <laughs> For real. Somebody tell me, who's Oscar? Because apparently Oscar has not been important to me. Real talk. Y'all sitting them to, oh, you, we shouldn't act like that in front of the white people. Massive than seen us show out. Listen, go to the south side of Chicago. Massa don't care how we show out. But we got to put on our best dress and be on our best behavior. We got hors d'oeuvres and stuff. Listen, people are people. And y'all don't know what the fuck these celebrities are going through. Because they are human just like you and I. They're human. And y'all forget that. Now, I... Everybody who knows me knows I love music. Everything about music. Because I'm a musician. When Phyllis Hyman passed away, I cried like my own mama died. I remember when Phyllis Hyman passed away. When Whitney Houston passed away, I was in shock. But when Bobby Christina died the same way, mm mm. Some ain't right in the mix and you ain't gonna make me believe it. Don't know, can't prove it, don't know them damn people, but something ain't right in the mix. Okay? And my baby daddy. For those of you who don't know, Prince, Rogers Prince Nelson is my baby daddy. <laughs> but as far as being fanatical about famous people, I was fanatic about Prince. I still am. I, I'm on everything he's on, and he's gone, y'all. He gone. They done took my baby daddy. He gone. Any any Prince page, I'm on it. Instagram, it don't matter. Facebook, it doesn't matter. That's just my thing. It's always been my thing. Okay. However, these people are human beings just like you and I. And before they got into the positions that they were in, they had a totally normal life like yours. Up, down, bad, hungry, food stamps, everything else. Everything that goes on in the indigenous copper colored communities, they've experienced. So tell me, why is this such a big ass thing? Tell me, why is it? Why is it? Because something else is happening. Everybody's talking about this. Everybody's confused about this. Everybody's, oh, did you see it? I mean, you can't turn the TV on. You can't go on YouTube. You can't go on nothing. Everybody's commentating. Why? Everybody's giving their opinion. Well, I don't think it's... Listen... It don't matter if we think it should have happened or not. It fucking did, didn't it? And there's going to be consequences for Will. Okay. However, messing with human beings, you liable to get the shit smacked out of you at any time. I'm going to say that again. Messing with human beings, you are liable to get the shit smacked out of you at any time. Now, what you going to do about that? I guess we'll get to that answer when that happens to you. But until you walk a mile in somebody else's shoes, you can't say what you would have done. Or how you couldn't have handled, I wouldn't have handled myself that way. You don't know that? Because we don't know the situation. And then he said, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. And repeated it. See, mm -mm, that was some long drawn out shit. And... Like I said, once again, who's to say it wasn't a setup? Because in that industry, we are all pawns. All pawns. Just giving y'all a different way to look at it. But this anti-lynching bill with the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act. This is so interesting, guys. I pose the question again, why is it that the copper-colored indigenous people always have to have an act of Congress to make Caucasians be civil? To make Caucasians be civil. Because, see, we are peaceable people. Indigenous copper-colored people, we are, we are peaceable people. 
And we are so brainwashed now. That's why everybody's so appalled that we'll smack the shit out of somebody. Chris Rock got the shit smacked out of him. Why are we appalled when violence goes on every single day in this country against ourselves, against someone? You read it in the news every day. Hell, there's violence going on. It's a war going on between two European countries. Why is this such a shock? It's a shock because our men are always supposed to be docile. And they're supposed to be a little bit more feminized. A little softer. You should know how to act in public. You know. Because that's what they put into our mother's minds. And that that mother's mind. And that mother's mind. So each generation can teach us how to act in public. When have you noticed... When we go out to the grocery stores or anywhere in public, fucking white children do not know how to act. They need their asses whipped. And their mama just be, mm-hmm, yeah, shut up, mom. I'm getting this and just falling out in the goddamn store shit. Ass whooping. Ass whooping. Fall out in the goddamn store. Me, I'm going to leave your ass right there. How about that? That's real talk. The times are changing, people, where people are not going to just sit back and grin and just let you talk about me all the time. And let me tell you something. That could have been a stressor. Will could have PTSD. Think about this, y'all. He could have PTSD from being a celebrity. No, no, no. Hear me out. Hear me out. You're like, what? What the hell is you talking about? No, seriously. Post-traumatic stress syndrome because as celebrities, y'all, we don't leave them alone. Paparazzi can be all in your goddamn toilet taking pictures of you. When you're a celebrity, people say what they want, how they want. They make up shit on you just to be associated with you. They don't necessarily even want to sue you. They just want their name in a sentence with your goddamn name. All the time. Think about the shit you're doing right now. And what if you walk outside your bedroom or walk outside your front door, you got 30 million paparazzi and 12 of them in the trees hiding that you don't even see. Taking pictures, walking in front of you, grabbing on you, calling your name, saying I heard this, sticking a mic in your face all the time. And people say, well, that's that's what celebrity is. Yeah, but you got to be respectful. You understand? I think celebrities have PTSD. When I see uh, Will go off like that, he's got PTSD. Chris, could that just could have been the straw that broke the camel's back of his PTSD. Do you know? Celebrity PTSD. Y'all heard it here first. Let's speak it out loud. I have given it and diagnosed it and given it a name. Celebrity PTSD. That's what I think it is. <laughs> well, y'all. I just want to say I love y'all. I love us so much. This is why I talk to us about stuff that only we talk about. Because as you can see, my conversation's different. I don't give a shit that two brothers got into an altercation or an entanglement or anything. Nobody died. All that happened was a smack. Y'all got to realize this. And I know you're going to agree with me if you a real indigenous aboriginal person. There's been people a lot of times that you want to smack the fire out of. Some you did, some you didn't. And then there have been some of us who have gotten the fucking fire slapped out of our asses. I don't think anybody enjoyed that. I'll tell you when I got the fire smacked out of me. The only person who's ever smacked the fire out of me is my mother. And she wasn't a smacking the hell out of a person mom anyway. I was just showing out at my brother's track banquet because I didn't want to be there with a skirt on. And I was tearing up the tablecloth, the little paper tablecloth. My brother's six years older than I am, so it was his senior year. I'm tearing up the tablecloth. My mama looked over there at me. Can you stop that? You know, she kept talking to my brother's track friends, um, mothers, because all the track team, they were up there at the banquet, and we were all sitting there. And my mom was talking to one of my uh, brother's friend's mother, and they like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm steady ripping this damn tablecloth. And my mama said, Candy, her voice changed on me. She said, Candy, and gave me that look. 
And she was like, yeah, child. Mm-hmm, yeah. Oh, these boys, I'm so proud. And, you know, they talking. Yeah, my son's going to southeast Missouri to run track, blah, blah, blah. I kept ripping that tablecloth. My mother did not skip a beat. She, I don't even know how fast she did it. My mama smacked me so fucking hard. I froze. And she and then she whispered, and you better not cry. Honey, I looked up and those other mothers were looking at me. And I was sitting there like, oh shit, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Don't cry. So I know if that was a real smack that Chris Rock got, that shit hurt. <laughs> you know. But I'm telling you, it looked like one of those Hollywood smacks to me. It just really did. I, I replayed it, replayed it, replayed it, replayed it. Let's get it from another angle. It just, it could be a setup, you know? And that shit like that happens. Shit happens. You want to see the indigenous aboriginal man with no aggression. But this world is aggressive. But when we in in your presence, listen, sometimes shit happens. You know, sometimes shit happens. And that's life. Once again, the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act. It took this long for there to be an anti-lynching act, but it should be logical that anti-lynching, that lynching should be a federal hate crime. But what's interesting to me about all of this, right? When we do something to each other, it's not as bad. But when they do something to us, we know it's a hate crime, but then that has to be proven. And then the court will say, well, we didn't prove that it was a hate crime. It was the intent. Bitch, please. Y'all be acting so damn delusional around here. Well, well, the court said it wasn't a hate crime. Shut the fuck up. We are experiencing so many hate crimes today just from the police department doing no-knock warrants in whatever state and fucking killing people because they're protecting their homes. Honestly, guys, somebody come in your fucking window right now or in your bed while you sleeping right now, kick your dough in, and you got a weapon, you have the right to bear arms through the Second Amendment and defend yourself. Why are these police officers not being sent to death row? So with this anti-lynching, Emmett Till anti-lynching act, does that include police officers as well? Because technology is changing so much and this body cam footage is really bringing this shit to the forefront. And how you just see, I was reading today about that Florida cop. He was fucking this black man up and then the female police officer got him off of him and he started choking the fuck out of her. How is he on administrative leave? If it's a felony to shoot at a police officer and all of that, or hit a police, hell, it's a felony to kick at a police dog. Then how come he isn't under felony charges for choking the fuck out of that female police officer? Once again, this is a police officer who was fucking this black man up, getting very aggressive, and then told everybody, turn off your fucking cameras. He was choking the shit out of her on the body cam footage. And they just released the sound of it. See, all this and that. We don't want to release the sound and sway the public. No, release the sound. Because sometimes you can hear some things you can't see. Okay? So when we want to talk about this violent nature of the country and this violent, oh my God, oh Will, it's just so, uh, I'm so appalled. And I'm just, uh, shut the fuck up. We are in a violent society. And violence begets violence. However, we are also in a society where people are standing up for themselves these days. And if you a dick, you might get the shit smacked out of you. Not saying Chris Rock's a dick. Not saying that. Not saying that at all. Just saying something else is going on behind the scenes, y'all. We just came out of this lockdown, this and that, and the whole thing looked fishy to me. But I'm crazy. I told you, I want y'all to think I'm the craziest motherfucker on this planet. Could you do that for me? 
Could you could you just believe that for them? <laughs> all right, y'all. That's all I got today. I'm going to get on out of here. I appreciate each and every person who has tuned into this podcast. I hope I have made you chuckle. I hope I made your day a little bit brighter. I hope I've helped you think about some things or made you think about some things that you've never even thought about before. I hope I've inspired you to speak your truth out loud and give voice to your opinion and your thought. Because you have the right to do that. You have the right to let speak it out loud. All right. I love you all once again. Thank you so much for your time. Please follow me right here on speakit17.podbean.com. And I love you all. Peace.